In this video, I will be covering one of the core issues I have seen discussed recently in the great de debate community. In effect, this stimulated my interest in creating part 2 of What is Power? In a nutshell, I will be talking about what are theories and models, what is electicism, what are the dimensions of power, what is empowerment, I'll be explaining aspects of the attribution theory and I'll be explaining the dynamics behind the McKinsey 7S framework and how it can contribute to creating a service for a community or a country. I'll be covering a lot in this video so I will try to timestamp each one to make it easier to watch and to take note if you want to find any of the if you find any of this useful. I'll provide references for you to do further research if this triggers any well further interest. What are theories and models? To summarize, a theory is a framework, framework which can describe and understand what is happening. For example, it can identify the set of circumstances which cause the event to arise. This can enable the researcher to make a model of predictions by exploring the factors that can influence something to happen, to control and manage change, like how a person could intervene to prevent themselves from making similar mistakes which cause a negative event. The key distinction between a theory and a model is how a model enables a person to understand how an event occurred, whereas the theory answers what occurred to cause the outcome. Electicism. This is used to describe the concept of using a range of different theories and models. People often use parts of each theory in a pick and mix fashion. A good example can be demonstrated on one of my videos regarding how, to, how we create our identity. I would suggest reading up on Cody and Lehman, who have created a framework of the Electric approach. It demonstrates how we can use a collection of theories and models to enable us to understand and recognize an issue and a resolution for any practice situation. To summarize, it's like adding more to your arsenal of problem solving skills. What are the dimensions of power? This topic is often discussed around subjects like politics, sociology and philosophy. There are five main dimensions of power. For example, the power of. This is about a collective strength of group who holds, holds to make a difference for a specific purpose. Power over. This is where a dominant group or individual holds control over another. For example, oppressors over the oppressed. Power with. This is where people find common ground around their values and actions, where they can recognize each other's diversity and use it to their advantage. Power to. This refers to an individual or group's potential to do something. And finally, power within. This relates to the person's self-worth, self-knowledge and self-esteem. What is empowerment? This subject can build an understanding of power and the powerless. In a way, a person understands power will impact on how they will seek to empower. This framework is categorized under three sets of responsibilities. Micro. This is referring to the individual or one-to-one, -one, where working with individuals or small groups. Now, this is a middle ground kind of uh, in between mi micro and macro. This is called meso. This is the middle level of practice. This can be this can be work with gr small groups or small communities. Macro. Now, this is the largest of the three. This involves practice and power to enable services to meet the needs of communities regions are all as big as a country. For example, a regional service manager, a member of parliament or president can take up these kinds of responsibilities. Attribution theory. This framework deconstructs how people interpret events and situations. This was initially created by Ida in 1958 and further developed by Weiner as a way of identifying the causes where people attribute the outcomes from. To break it down, the framework can be divided into four stages. An event occurs or someone does something, this is perceived by a third party, the person decides if the act or event was intended or unplanned, the person then attributes the cause or motivation. Attributions can be deconstructed whether the result was of something of, of external or internal control, for example if a person possessed the skill or chance to succeed or fail. McKinsey's 7S Framework. This model was built by Waterman, Peters and Phillips in the 1980s. It can be instrumental to facilitate an organization to analyze and understand an effective service. 
the values of the service act as the central cog of the facilitation process. The values are interdependent on six factors. Strategy. This refers to the plan to achieve a set of outcomes and goals. For example, the methodology to disseminate resources to groups or individuals to provide the, the service. Structure. This identifies the way a company structure its components of responsibilities, like the management structure. Systems. This relates to the policies, procedures and protocols which are set up to support the facilitation of practice in an organization. Skills. This factor describes how staff are capable to fulfill their role and responsibilities to provide an effective service. Staff. This factor outlines the roles of an individual or group has in the organization. Style. This is another important component which relates to the culture of the organization to the way managers' leadership styles promote the goals and vision in the organization. By applying an eclectic approach, we can combine all of these frameworks to create an operative framework built to refine its mistakes and build on its strength to achieve more and progress. Much like any tool, it can be extremely useful to enable society to become powerful. However, if the values do not represent the needs of the service user, it will inevitably fail. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, favorite and subscribe. Please.